Hello and welcome to South Carolina's installment of Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. I'm your host, Reggie Hall. Coming up in this episode, we'll talk about agriculture and the role it plays in competitive athletics, especially the foundation of play. Then we'll go to Clemson, South Carolina and introduce you to a landmark there known by many around the country. We'll share with you our palmetto portraits and introduce you to our farmer outstanding in the field. All that and more as Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture continues. Hello and welcome back to South Carolina's installment of Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. I'm Reggie Hall. I think few people realize that agriculture is the very foundation of most competitive sports, whether it's a hardwood basketball court, the course or court at Wimbledon, a golf course, a baseball or football field. Agriculture is at the very heart of the playing surface for those competitions. Farmers grew that surface. Last spring, hundreds of thousands of fans watched live and on television as the South Carolina Gamecock baseball team made their journey to become back-to-back -back National World Series champions. They saw much more than a game, though. They saw a high-maintenance field that takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of dedication to maintain. As University of South Carolina heads groundkeeper, Clark Cox explains. We hear it all the time in athletics, is that athletics is the front porch of the university. We're out front and everybody sees what's going on. I like to say we're the front yard of the, of the university. We want to put the, our best foot forward uh, whenever you know, that people are looking, looking at the university. We want to represent the University of South Carolina in the best possible way. You know, all the cultural practices, fertilization, uh, mowing naturally is probably the, 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 one of the biggest things we do. We mow almost all of our fields every day, uh, especially this time of year with the Bermuda grass, with the heat we've had, that Bermuda grass thrives on that heat. So if you miss a day or two, uh, you can really get behind on your mowing. Uh, but all the cultural practices, all the painting, field painting, our staff does handle all of that. So that's probably one of the most visible things on a Saturday afternoon when everyone comes to williams Bryce Stadium and they see the letters and the Gamecock logo, uh, Block C logo at, at midfield, and uh, that's, that's one of the things that we do and that's a large part of it. But uh, just anything that goes into making these athletic fields, number one, safe. Uh, that's our number one priority is making sure that the fields are safe for our student athletes. Number two, that they are a good surface for, uh, don't affect the game in, in a negative way, uh, one way or the other. And, uh, and then Last but not least is the aesthetics and how, how, they, how we want it to look. What's even more challenging is that the University of South Carolina doesn't have a baseball practice field. So Cox and his crew have to keep the field in game ready condition even in the midst of full time practice. Our biggest enemy in, in sports grass and the sports turf industry is wear. And uh, that is, uh, sometimes we have to, you have to educate people and remind them that what they're sta standing on and what they're playing on is a living thing. And uh, it's not just, uh, it's not a synthetic surface and you can't apply an unlimited amount of wear and play to it without some, uh, some, some sacrifices and, and a lot of times that would, that would mean the, not an ideal playing surface. Not only does the USC crew have the responsibility for maintaining and keeping up the baseball field, they're charged with maintaining about 20 total acres of sports fields in and around the downtown metropolitan Columbia area, including baseball, softball, football, soccer, and track and field. We've actually got a, a golf practice facility that we're responsible for as well. Uh, so all in all, it's about 20, uh, a little over 20 acres of uh, grass fields that we maintain. And uh, we've got a staff, a full-time staff of uh, six employees, including myself. And then we've got 
we have some some students. Uh, we do have some students, even though we we don't have a turf program here. So I'm I'm always amazed at uh, the amount of students that do come in who yeah. are interested in this, even though that's not what they want to make a, into a career. And some of them actually get bit by the bug while they're here, and 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 maybe they uh, decide that that is a path they like to go down. Football, soccer, all the sports. Uh, they. Ten, you see now that there's there's a very few there's a very small window that's downtime, so for us that makes it a challenge because in the old days, from June Ju June and July you you really didn't have to work around anything. Nowadays, it seems like our you know our football team is conditioning uh, it seems every day, uh, so it, it's diff it's a challenge for us to kind of juggle what we're doing, uh, but but it is a constant maintenance even if they weren't here. There's, the grass never stops growing. Uh, you hope it doesn't. Uh, it's, there's always uh, work that has to be done, and so it's a year-round uh, deal for us. We'll be back with more on athletic turf grass when Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture continues. Hello and welcome back to South Carolina's installment of Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. I'm Reggie Hall. It's no secret that the University of South Carolina and Clemson University are arch rivals when it comes to competitive sports. But when it comes to turf grass management, the two are often united forces, one calling the other many times to solve problems or challenges in athletic field turf grass. Clemson University football has a big challenge ahead of it this fall. The Tigers have a new field new sidelines, and a new grade. The process for installing the new football playing surface began about 18 months before the first kickoff of this season. Coaches and the grounds crew met to discuss their ultimate goals. Soil was cultivated from the existing field and sent to a turf grass nursery for sprigging. The old field surface was removed, the crown in the middle of the field was leveled, while drainage was installed and a new sod grown just for Clemson's Memorial Stadium was installed. Mike Eccles is the head groundskeeper at Clemson. Uh, we're standing on synthetic sod lines and uh, what we did, um, this is the only modified soil field here at Clemson. So what that means is, is uh, this is a sand based field. So the original growing medium was underneath this synthetic before we took it out. So what we did was, we realized this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We had the same soils that we had when we first did the field 10 years ago. So we actually took the soil, stockpiled it, and hauled it to a sod farm in Georgia. And grew it, and there it is. Wow. And uh, just really a gr great and unique opportunity that, uh, and I'm very fortunate here at Clemson, I've got a great, great administration uh, that has enough confidence in me to recognize that you know, if you say so, let's do it. <laughs> but uh, really, really a unique thing. And that's that's one of the, you know, there, there's so much that goes into the understanding of not only the grass that's growing, but the, com the soil component, how that soil component works with water infiltration, yeah. how it works with water retention, how it works with nutrient uptake and retention. Right, right. And uh, so it was just a win-win for us. And Communication between coaches and the grounds crew is vital to the success of the athletic teams and to the ultimate success of turf maintenance. Dabo Sweeney is the head coach of the Clemson Tigers football team. I ask him to, to let me know how I can help him. Uh, you know, one of the things that he does a great job of is communicating. Mm -hmm. And uh, he lets me know uh, their, their plan and, and what they're, when, they're, when the rise coming, when it's being killed out and all that kind of stuff. Same thing with our practice fields. Uh, he gets everything ready for our camps in the summer. And so we're constantly working to make sure that when these players are on the field, it's, at the best, uh, it's in the best condition that it can be. And so the big thing for me is, is I, I just say, how can I help you, Mike? And so maybe it's like, hey, coach, will you move, make sure you're doing a good job of moving these drills. Right. Let's don't just, you know, football players and coaches are like a bunch of cows. You know, <laughs> we just kind of have a, one track and, 
And so we try to be conscious and make sure that we, we rotate our fields as far as our heavy competitive drills mm -hmm. and also our individual drills. Don't just go to the same patch of grass every day. And uh, that's the way we can help him. In my communications with Coach Sweeney and his staff, it's about moving around. Please don't run 25 plays from the 25 yard line. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. Keep moving. Gotcha. Keep moving. And uh, that, that's the toughest thing to get. Now, when they come out here, he's got to get these boys ready. That's I understand right. that. Sure. It's about understanding being in this stadium. Right. So whatever he does, we're just going to fix it. Not only is Clemson University known for its competitive sports, it's also known for its agricultural research and development, including the area of turf grass. We caught up with researcher Jeff Atkinson at a recent turf grass field day where turf growers and industry representatives turned out to see the latest in the field. It's a way for us to communicate with the turf professionals and also other researchers and collaborate and um, really get a better idea of you know, where our industry is headed and, and um, what we're working on. And it really spread the idea of, of what we're researching on a day-to-day -day basis. We're looking at different fertility programs for turf. We're also looking at different fungicide and pesticide or fungicide herbicide applications. Um, mainly what we're concerned with from the guys that came up from Clemson are a lot of weed science which is herbicide application and weed control. Um, mostly, uh, mostly what's here at the PD rec is a lot of fungicide, or fungicide trials. Um, along with fertility trials on different types of turf grasses. Turf grasses that you'll find further in the uh, southern parts of the state, closer to the coast, and also what we'll find up towards the upstate. When we come back, we'll take you to a Clemson landmark not far from the stadium. Stay tuned as Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture continues. Hello and welcome back to South Carolina's installment of Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. I'm Reggie Hall. Let's take a little bit of time to learn about this episode's farmer outstanding in his field. I'm Gary Yeomans from Furman, South Carolina, and our family owns a farm called Green Acres Turf Farm and we produce residential and sports turf and ship it all over the state of South Carolina, Georgia, and North, and North Carolina. We produce different varieties of turf grass and we're standing in a particular field that produces sports turf and the name of this particular grass is Celebration Bermuda Grass. And it can be used on sports fields, golf courses, uh, commercial applications and some home lawns. My father and his twin brother, um, uh, I guess other elder members of the family farm and my brother and myself, um, Alex Yeomans, and Alex and I both graduated from Clemson University and came back and uh, became involved in the family farm. Being a family farm, we've always been diversified with row crops and uh, fruit and vegetables like watermelons, uh, even produced catfish for a while. And in the year 2000, uh, we started what is called Green Acres Turf Farm. That's when we first started producing turf. So we've been producing turf for 11 years now. The location that we live at is close to a lot of development. And um, uh, there seemed to be a demand for turf and, and uh, you know, we had land that was suitable for it and we converted it from row crop land into to turf fields. You know, early on after I graduated from Clemson, I served on the South Carolina Farm Bureau Young Farmer Committee for a while. I've been a county president in Hampton County and um, I've also 
served on, on various committees at the state level. It's the only unified voice of agriculture you know, for, for the farmer and there, there's so many different things that, that um, uh, farmers do, different crops and different you know, entire industries just like uh, you know, your, your soybeans and corn, your feed grain industry is one thing, you got uh, horticulture is a whole nother thing, you got livestock and, and so many different things and, and um, you know, Farm Bureau is the only unified voice for the American farmer that I know of. It used to be a good old filling station for cars. Now it's a great filling station for people. We're talking, of course, about the Esso Club in Clemson, South Carolina. That's right, this 1920s era gas station and grocery in the shadows of Death Valley, Clemson University's football stadium, is now a meat and three restaurant and bar, recognized by many as one of the most unique restaurants and bars in the South. It's definitely a Clemson landmark. Um, we've seen lots of celebrities come through here. We, the gas station disappeared in the 1980s and we've since just become a restaurant and bar serving Clemson and all of the visiting guests from other schools. People love the fried chicken, the sweet potato casserole, the fried okra. Uh, those have really, really put us on the map, especially here in Clemson. It's the best place to be on game day. We get so many, we are able to hire so many people that may have to give up going to the game because they'd rather be here. The main bar is topped with the original cedar seating from Death Valley, Clemson's football stadium. And the walls are lined with memorabilia dating back to when the school was known as Clemson College. We have pretty much anybody that comes in that's never been in here before ask, what are these numbers on the bar and, and where did you get this bar? And it is the, the seats ripped out of the old stadium and they've been in the SO Club since the 80s. As long and moved, when the bar was here we moved it down. We took the bar with us. We didn't want to get rid of that because it's something that only the SO Club has. Um, visiting fans are always here, our fans are here, everybody gets along, it's a lot of fun, a lot of partying, good music, good drinks, good food. Stay tuned for our regular feature segment as we show you our newest Palmetto portrait when the Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture continues.
Well, that's all the time we have for South Carolina's installment of Farm Bureau's Voices of Agriculture. Thanks for watching. We hope next time you watch a game or a match that you'll have a whole new appreciation for agriculture as it lays the foundation for those contests. Until next time, please find us on the website scfb.org to learn more about the South Carolina Farm Bureau Federation. And until then, I'm your host, Reggie Hall. Thanks for watching.